Hey everybody, it's Bob Fibbs, the Retail Doc. At a new time and date, it is Friday, May the 21st. It is noon Eastern time. And if you would do me a favor and type in where you are joining me from in the world, well, that would be great. My clock is ringing out. It is noon Eastern time. I know some of you are just waking up across the world, but I would love to find out who all is here. And I know it always takes a little bit of time for uh, the system to find everyone. But, uh, you know, it's very exciting time right now. Brick and mortar retailers are running back. It reminds me of the movie, The Wrath of Khan, one of my favorite Star Trek, Star Trek II, which uh, was the original cast with the um, uh, Steve Horner. That doesn't quite sound right. It's Horner's was the, did the uh, music. And there's a moment when the Enterprise has been attacked. And it's because Kurt went through, uh, Kirk had gone through and he said, oh, well, we don't have to pay attention to that, which is what, um, you know, the first yeoman was saying, don't do this. And he's like, no, we're doing it anyway. And of course they're attacked. And he said, we got caught with our britches down. And that's kind of what's happened with brick and mortar retail right now, that we were told you better prepare, you better prepared, it's gonna be happening. And yet we didn't hire right away or we let people go and said, oh, well, they'll be back. And now I went scrambling to get employees. And, you know, we kind of got caught with our britches down. But even with that, brands like Richemont just reply, just said that their full year's profit is up 38%. Now that's Cartier, Van Cleef and Arpels and Dunhill. There are Macy's is reporting uh, increases. Starbucks is doing more business than they did in 2019. There's a lot of great... Uh, stories out there for retail. Hey, Richard, glad you're there from uh, the UK. Okay, glad you're joining me this morning, uh, or I guess this afternoon. Uh, but the story is that everybody is running around saying, oh my gosh, there's more demand than we thought. Well, that's only going to get worse. So what are you going to do about it right now? What are you looking at to come up with a crew that is going to be trained to deliver? And crews make all the difference in the world. And I'll tell you a quick story. So this last uh friday it's a week ago uh gone down to favorite restaurants down here in this little uh, village that i live in and uh, this wonderful server was there and she's always great and she's always fun and she was doing a great job and laughing and uh you know ordered extra drinks and dessert and the whole thing and decided to go back this last Wednesday because it's like, well, she might be working. And sure enough, I walk in and she goes, like, hey, great to see you. And it was wonderful. And she says, oh, can I get your drink? She comes back and says, well, I won't be able to be your waitress today. We have to uh, switch off from one to the other. So you'll be helped by this other woman is like, oh, great. And uh, so where the when she came back, this other woman brought the uh, bread, not a word. And when I was looking for at the menu, it was like, do you know what you want? And it was uh, terrible and that every interaction was silent. And I just find myself thinking, do you understand that you are losing business because of the uh, wild, wild west when I go into your place of business? It's one way one day and it's another another. Hey, Shane, glad you're here today. You owe me a call, dude. And uh, when it really gets right down to it, you are the one responsible for your four walls. Look, an awful lot of people, and I know we have a lot of people watching on LinkedIn today, an awful lot of people are spending time saying it's all about being online. Oh, online, we got to do all the online stuff. Yeah, well, online converts at 1% to 2%, returns run 30 to 50%, and 50% of that 1% or 2% that people say is great is being sucked up by Amazon. Now, I don't know about you. But I just want you to think about it. Imagine if you're a baker and you decide, uh, I'm going to be making bread. And 98% of the time, it doesn't rise and it doesn't taste good. But I just need to keep working on this. Like, dude, at some point, you it's a hopeless cause. Why don't you work on making pies or doing something in your control that you know how to do? And that's the same thing with brick and mortar retailers, that the conversion points in a, in a store are anywhere from 30 to 50% and returns run at a paltry 6%. Now, I get it. There's several of you who are on this call and you're saying, yeah, well, I can't even get uh, materials now and the computer source, you know, it's it's um, uh, chips are in short supply and plastics are in short supply. It's like, I get it. I get it. I don't care because there are five trillion dollars consumers have saved in the last year. They are itching to spend it. They don't want to hear, oh, you have to wait if you're going to do it. 
You know, if you're going to have a product and say, oh, you have to wait, then give them something else to keep them engaged or say, well, while we might have to wait for that product, why don't you, while you're here, get X, Y, and Z so when it arrives, you'll be all set. But we aren't thinking that way. We are in this duck and cover mode in retail saying, oh, you know, it's just so busy. Well, the day that it's not busy is the day you're going to think, oh, I guess I should have done something about that, which is training. That's uh, that's me. I am the training guy for some of the biggest brands in the world. It's all about the people. It's the human connection. And so if you're joining me right now, I would appreciate you typing in and letting know me know where you're joining in from because it always is around the world. And I always appreciate you uh, actually spending the time. If you're watching on replay, I watch every comment. So why don't you just get your mind engaged, put down the cheeseburger and the TikTok video and uh, just take a moment and spend it with me because you tuned in and I want to make sure I give you enough value. Uh, I used to do this broadcast every week on Sunday mornings and I decided I wanted my weekends back. So I'm only doing this during my business hours and depending on how well it works, I may do more sooner. But if not, I'll do it pretty much once a month. Hey, Mike, glad you're here from Panama. I appreciate that. All right, so someone asked me, what would be some good questions to ask applicants to make sure they are trainable? So one of them is always, when I uh, do hiring, I always want to ask people, give me a time when. Past behavior is what determines future success. So for this, I might say, give me a time you were trained how to do something on a previous job. Now, the A answer for that is, oh, my manager took out a sheet and they uh, walked me, they told me what they were going to train me, they trained me, and then they had me repeat it back to them uh, so I did it. That would be, well, that would probably be a, like a, a C answer. Look great. There was a process. You remember that, but the A answer would be, oh, let me give an example of it. Uh, he was training me. Uh, I was trained how to, uh, tie a knot with broccoli stems. I don't know. So the first thing he taught me was where the refrigerator was that we got the broccoli. And then he told me the importance of tying the broccoli stems into a bow was because customers expected that. And it's what was part of their signature. And so you're looking for those details of training that they are. And yeah, don't ha don't um, ask me about broccoli tying. I, I don't know. But the point is you're seeing that did the training stick and did their mind follow that process when they were telling you? Because that's what's going to determine. Or maybe you're going to say, give me a time when you were called out for not following procedures. And like, oh, I remember that time. And then hopefully they'll give you something specific and say, uh, were we ever trained on that? Uh, no. Well, great, why don't we take a moment and just tell me, how would you train someone uh, to how to do that so they didn't get um, called out? And you're looking for them to unpack exactly what they've already done. That's the key to making it work. So a great question, how to know that applicants are trainable. You know, right now, again, if you're in that duck and cover mode, can you just fog this mirror? Can I just know that you're there? <sighs> can you work a shift? That's not going to cut it because ultimately just having people come in and warm bodies on the floor doesn't do it. Looking at you, Macy's, when I went into your store and it was packed and nobody was there, uh, employees were picking online orders and there were still shipping crates and different things on a busy Saturday. What are you thinking? We don't have enough time. Shut up. You had a 16 months to pay, pay to get ready for this. And that's true for all of you, small boutique, apparel, electronics, whatever it is. The demand is huge and it's only going to get more. This is going to be a lights out 4th of July celebration. So if you're in the party goods store, you sell fireworks, you should be doing great. But also when it gets to back to school, as well as when it gets to fourth quarter and Christmas and Hanukkah and holiday. And if you're watching me, type in where you're joining me from. I always like to know. Diane, glad you're there from Huntington Beach. Ben from New Jersey. Margot from Collingwood, Ontario, where we're still under stay at home orders. Uh, customers already. Yeah, Margo, it, we are hoping that Ontario uh, lifts that soon. I was very excited. Our clients in Ireland were very excited. They were able to open on Thursday and, uh, you know, the sky's the limit and everybody is happy. Uh, I think the words that uh, one retailer used in their uh, assignment properties, actually, Mall talked about the euphoria of people going shopping and I'm one of them. So I hope you are as well, that you are not still stuck in the, oh, we have to be afraid something worse. Hey, get over yourself. Now's the time to really focus on making exceptional experience for those people who come in your doors. Carmen from Ottawa, Ontario. Great, we got a couple of you. Hey, Carmen, glad you're there. Uh, can you give me some ideas of how to get customers to come back? 
Well, first off, make sure that you have a good customer experience because people only go back to places they like. Number two is make sure that you always greet them with good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I don't give a damn what your employees want to say. That's what works. That's what gets people to at least feel acknowledged and gets you in the game. And uh, the other thing that's really new is that SMS messaging. You know, I use Podium. I, I've been, I've done uh, webinars with them, and I think Podium really works because what you can do is you can appear like your business. You actually can take your landline and convert it to a text line, so that when I'm shopping at um, I don't know, computer hardware, and I see on my phone that it, the message is coming from them, I will answer it and I will be engaged versus, oh, who is this guy? Shane. Uh, I don't know him. So you want to be able to, to still look like your business. And it's not a personal thing because that way, if let's say Shane is off that day and so he's texting somebody else, um, the customer isn't like, oh, well, it's Mary and she's here and that it's really focused that it's just your business. So I think SMS is great, but with a lot of uh, uh, ability comes a lot of responsibility. You can't just spam people 10% off. If you come in with this, show us this card. That doesn't work. So there you go. Uh, David from Wilmington, North Carolina. Very nice. Uh, I'm actually born in Wilmington, Delaware. I think we had this discussion, David, right? Uh, Lainey, good morning from Seattle. All right. Adrian from Mexico. Now you guys are getting the hang of it. Uh, all right, so uh, I have two more questions. If you have a question for me, you can type it in. This looks like this will probably wrap up about uh, in about the next five or so minutes. How do I stop shoplifting? Well, that uh, goes back to the original point I was making about hiring people. Shoplifters look for stores that don't have enough help, distracted employees, bored employees who are looking down at their phones, and from people who don't know the warning signs. And before I get too far into it, uh, you know where the greatest amount of shoplifting happens? It's called the five finger discount. It's your own employees. So one of the first steps you can take is to examine randomly your trash uh, just before someone takes out, hey, let me take a quick look at that because that's the way you can stash stuff around or put it in your car, especially if you work at a mall or somewhere big where you can't really see their car. So consider that. Also the warning signs of shoplifting. Shoplifters do not want to meet your eyes. So you're always, when you're greeting, you're always looking for the color of their eyes. Do you know that? And then you want them to just let, no, let you know that you're watching them. Uh, and then also being aware when people will walk in with bags and strollers. But there's a certain personality style right now that uh, I think got uh, emboldened by the whole masking and uh, safety from the last 16 months where they had kind of control over you, go over and use the sanita sanitizer, you uh, put your mask up, uh, stay six feet. You know, they've got into this whole control over people. I can make you do something. And I think that that um, general suspicion of customers is running really high right now, even though 50% of the US is vaccinated. And we've listed, lifted the mask mandate for many retailers around the nation, around the world. I think there's still this idea to look at customers with suspicion. And so you know what it's like. You go into a store and the employees are over there talking, but they're, you can feel them uh, burning a hole in your back because they're just, I'm, watch, I'm watching you. And I think that's a real danger coming out of the pandemic that uh, unbridled employees are going to have this feeling of making people aware that they're watching them. And I don't think that makes it really good for your customers or for your employees. And that's going to come down to your training. So uh, I think looking at the eyes, the bags, and also checking the trash and just understanding, again, sometimes the people that most are uh, telling you that they are in your corner about shoplifting could really be the very ones who might be stealing it from you. I know that's hard to believe, but that that happens. Am I right? Type in yes if that's happened to you. Anyone had a... a, a, a Associate employee who has stolen from you, just put a Y in the comments. Just go it right now so I know that you're there. Hey, Grad, uh, Papa from Senegal, glad you're here today. And my last question I have here is, I have high turnover. How do I stop that from happening? Well, it, I guess we're on a theme here today because we have so many people who are uh, trying to find employees. Yes, yeah, see, Margo, yes, Steve, yes. If you haven't had a, if you don't think you've had an employee steal from you, you are not very observant because I can almost guarantee you we've all had them. Uh, I remember the day I caught my one of my very first clients thirty some years ago it was a little hotel in Newport Beach, 
And I didn't want to believe what the computer was telling me that somebody was going through and refunding uh, uh, customers as no shows. Uh, and yet it shows somebody was charging them and taking the money out and listing it as a, as a refund. I didn't want to believe that about this guy because I personally like the guy. But at some point, it's like, well, there it is. <laughs> the information is right there. Got you. And I had to have that conversation with him. And that's a terrible conversation. And you say, I'm prepared to call the cops with this information. Are you prepared to come clean with me? And that was a horrible feeling. But it doesn't matter. It came to us wanting to believe and not inspect what we're expecting. We just want to believe everything is great. Yay, we all love each other. Oh, we go out and have drinks together. Yeah, well, they still could end up stealing from you. So uh, to prevent high turnover, remember that people quit managers, not businesses. More often than not, they're being managed in a way that either isn't empowering or is, they aren't learning anything, they aren't growing, or you're leaving them alone. You know, that's the big conceit of retail right now. Wanted friendly employees who go the extra distance, and now we're leaving on the sales floor alone, and they have no one to interact with. So, of course, they're going to pick up their girlfriend, boyfriend, which is their smartphone, and they're going to be drawn into the digital world because you told them they were going to be talking to this but you're gonna schedule them in the off hours and there's gonna be a lot of time and then there's gonna be rushes and they're not gonna know how to manage that. So look at yourself first. Are you really preparing them for what the job entails? That yeah, maybe right now they're gonna be working alone on the, on the floor, but how are you gonna make it interesting for them? Are you training them to succeed? Do they have a path forward from being someone who starts? And let's face it, uh, that's another discussion, but. Uh, if you're paying minimum wage, you're not going to get anybody because I can see that my local McDonald's is starting at $15 an hour and another place is putting out $17. Right now in the short term, you are not trying to hire the perfect employee who's going to stay with you 40 hours. You are looking for that person who already has a job probably and they see at 17 bucks, maybe I'll take a second job and I can do 20 hours a week or something like that because the good people pretty much have those jobs. To say that they're all sitting at home and they're just waiting for their check I know that most of the great employees, all the great employees I have want to work because they love working with the brand. They love engaging with customers. If they don't want to do that, it's really easy to stay home and not get that job. So before you're making that assumption, just understand if you have to pay $17 an hour to get someone and then you hold them, you train them, you hold them accountable and in three months you have to let go of them, well then that's it. But you don't want to be working the store alone. You don't want to end up having customers railing about you on on uh, on social media that I couldn't get anybody to wait on me or people were rude or there was a line, et cetera, et cetera. And then just understanding that the pay scale has got to be competitive. So for right now, whatever it's going to be, do what you have to do. You know, everyone's raising rates. There's no two ways about it. Inflation from all kinds of reasons is happening. But making sure that your store is covered is the number one job and making sure that if it's your mall, if it's your brand, that you are constantly hiring when you don't need to. Poor managers are the ones that put up the now hiring. You are always hiring. You're always letting someone go. So those are my big ideas for you today. Does that resonate? Did you enjoy spending some time with me? If so, type in, what did you get out of my time here today with the last 18 minutes? So it's one thing you got out of my call here today. Just put it in comments below. What's one thing you got out of spending time with me? And even if you watch it on replay, still do that because we call this associative learning. You heard something. Now you're asking the brain, go in there in the file drawer. What's one thing I learned at it and write it out. You're having to make a muscle memory from it. So now it's going to submit. And now maybe you'll take action on it because I'm passionate about brick and mortar retail. I believe in being hopeful. I believe in looking at the positive because it's just a matter of choice muscle. Either you choose to look at why your life sucks and you can't get people and you can't get supplies, et cetera, et cetera. Or you say, this is a temporary blip. In six months from now, we are going to be stoked. I'm looking at new leases. I'm looking at buying a competitor. I'm looking at bringing up my employees who are going to be able to open a second uh, store. We're going to add shifts. Whatever it's going to be, that's a much more fun place because then your brain is working on the hows not just woe is me and being that, you know, schlep rock, which I'm probably dating myself a little bit, right? So there you go. Hey, Steve, that's exactly right. Hiring the right person. And again, it's going to come, that comes from you asking those right questions to give me a time when. I don't give a damn what your 
uh, what your goals are in five years. Tell me, you know, what do you think customer service? No, you don't ask what their goal of customer service. You've already defined it. My goal of customer service is someone feels like they're the most important person for the five to 10 minutes they're in my store. My goal is you're going to become the trusted advisor where when they go to sit down on their, in their chair, their brand is, uh, their, my brand is tattooed on their butt that they would only come back to us to shop from us. It's those kind of things that make the difference. And when you realize that, then you realize, hey, I have got the greatest job in the world. And I feel I do. I get to spend time with you once a month chatting up retail. I certainly you'll see me on all kinds of places where I'm sharing my thoughts. But in the end, remember, we're about as successful as we make our minds up to be. Thanks for joining me today. And uh, I, I, Steve, I never thought I having such a high turnover first time in 25 years. You know, I was getting ready to wrap it up, Steve, but I will say they are all calling it a, as the great uh, a reckoning where people are going to be leaving jobs in droves that they hung on to for the last 15, 16 months. Now is going to be your opportunity to steal them away and provide a better experience. But you are the ones that are going to have to find out what you're made of. And that's going to be looking in the mirror every day and saying, my job is to make my employees day, to challenge them, to hold them accountable, to train them in something new. If you want to do that with SalesRx, my online retail sales training, like 10,000 people in four different continents are using, well, you should go to salesrx.com. It explains it all. If you want to have a conversation with me, you can hit the contact button or you can just start training right away. But make no mistake, if you're thinking about it, your, your competitors may have already been thinking about it and they're prepared to clean your clock because they know how um, thin you are, you are scheduling your employees or how afraid you are of the future. And that's really important. Uh, so yeah, you've never experienced this type of turnover in 35 years. It doesn't matter. Look to your own management style and look to the training you're giving them. Because again, as about to wrap up, we are about as successful as we make our minds up to be. Concentrate on your four walls, concentrate on making your employees day and they'll make your customers day. Doesn't work any other way than that. I'm Bob Fibbs, the retail doc. Thanks so much for joining me. Have a great weekend.